there's two main like taboo topics in the world that if we talked about them more and shine light on them more often, that the world would just be a healthier, better place. And those two things are mental health and the other one is sexual health. Most of us are so uncomfortable when the subject of sex comes up. We don't have role models for it. No one talked to us about it. I was into your podcast about freedom. You did one of about like freedom yeah. and letting go. And I was like, oh my God, this is such a great analogy for sex. Imagine that our life is like a hundred room mansion that we yeah. lived in, right? And there's one room and we live in that one room, but you could go outside that room and there's so much life to live. That is our sex life. We all live in one room. The majority of us have sex in the same way, at the same time, in the same position, in the same room, over and over and over and over again. What we crave the most in relationships to keep it interesting and hot is we crave variety, we crave spontaneity, something a little bit different. Pleasure is such an important part of our overall health and wellness. When you integrate pleasure into your life, we're much more likely to have more productivity and more pleasure and connection to our partner. Sex changes over time. There's so much more on the menu. I just wanna give people the menu. I want them to know what's in that mansion. I want them to know what's in those haunted rooms. We prioritize everything else in our life and sex is always like in the back burner. It's like the bastard child of the health of the wellness yes. industry. It's like sex should just feel good without prioritizing it. It takes yeah. works. You gotta prioritize what's yes. important. You gotta put sex on the menu. You gotta yeah. put sex on the calendar. All right, welcome back everybody. Well. Today is a topic that we've not ever covered here before that I'm excited to cover. If you've got young ears, young eyes, probably not the one for them today. But for everybody else, this is definitely the one for you. We're going to talk about sex, baby. We're talking sex today with the best on the planet. She has a new book out called Smart Sex, How to Boost Your Sex IQ and Own Your Pleasure. And if you're listening to this before the middle of June, then you're going to pre-order it. And if it's after the middle of June, you're just ordering the book. And I wanted to have her on because I just believe bliss and pleasure in life is so critical. That's really the, the nature of why we do the show is to have people have more bliss and pleasure in their life. And sex is a major component of that. So, Dr. Emily Morse, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Ed. Here we go. I got to tell you, everyone in my family and my friends is very uncomfortable we're having this conversation today. <laughs> like, be very careful where you go. So, mm. we'll keep our conversation today to mainly committed monogamous relationships. Great. Yeah. But it's such an important topic, and it's not talked about. It's like a taboo thing. And it's not to me. It's just most of the people around me are like, all right, where are you going with this today? So let's see where we go. <laughs> why is Why are so many people in relationships that even that I know that seem to have love, you know, or they at least really like each other a lot, but, man, it seems like the physical intimacy part of their lives over time really deteriorates. What happens to people in why does it matter? Mm, that's such a great question. And mm. thank you for having me on because this is gonna be this is gonna be fun. I think yes. we're really gonna help people think about it in a different way. Mm. The reason why is because we don't talk about sex in mm. long term in any relationships. I'm gonna say long term relationships, but most of us are so uncomfortable when the subject of sex comes up. Mm. We don't have role models for it. No one mm. talked to us about it. Maybe we grew up in a religious home where it wasn't yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And it's still not okay. And so we just don't have the comfortability with it. That's the one thing we're not comfortable about sex the next thing is that we're afraid if we do bring it up that it's going to make us look bad like we should already know everything or we're going to insult our partner if i give my partner feedback about something i'm really going to hurt his feelings yeah. she's going to feel bad about it so i just i'm not going to do it at all mm -hmm. and the third thing is sometimes we just have this sense that something's wrong with our relationship sex isn't what it once was at the beginning which mm -hmm. by the way it never is mm -hmm. That's why we call it the honeymoon phase. There's a reason, you know, that's a really great period of time, but it doesn't last forever. So we think, well, you know, maybe something's wrong with me or my partner. If I bring it up, I don't really know what I want to say about it. I know it should, could be better, but it's just not. And I'm not sure where to go with the conversation. So I'm just going to remain mute. Yeah. Hope it gets better. You talked earlier about communicating. And so I guess that means two things you talk about in the book, too. Do you mean just like overall communication is one thing like are we talking is there is there this like connection this intimacy verbally that we have when we talk but then there's also like because on your website you have all these tools and quizzes and resources <laughs> yeah. of things a couple could do together because it is awkward like listen it's normal when it was that good it was, <laughs> and, and you know there's a lot of lying that goes on yeah. there's a lot of faking that yeah. goes on in sex right and i've even had male friends recently tell me I fake too, yeah. right? Like yes. that even surprised me. <laughs> we all fake. Like, like married couple <laughs> guy telling me I fake it sometimes. I'm like, okay, that happens, I guess. Yeah. So when you say communicate, do you mean both? Like we should, we should, it sounds silly, but like 
where it's actually not. is it harder for a woman or a man if like, it's like no communication like all right let's go <laughs> so the, leading up to sex communication or do you mean communicating about actual what feels good to me all of it such a good question okay. i think we need to communicate about sex during sex we need to communicate okay. about sex when we're outside the bedroom mm. all the time we've talked about it because most couples maybe you could relate to this and people listening mm. it's like you might say like oh we can have sex tonight did we have sex we haven't had sex in a while should we have sex and then in the moment we might be like is that good mm. but that's the that's about all we do and yeah. so i provide so many tools on the website and in the book about how to specifically do it because here's the thing most people, like I said, have no sex education. Mm. And if we do, on top of this interview, I was saying that we don't talk about it because we have no sex education. We have no models of people talking about it. So I'm, I get that it's awkward. Like I spend most of my show, like I give a ton of tips. I talk about, you know, how to do all the things. But most of what I do when it comes down to it is how to communicate. And I have okay. great tools like... Because here's the thing, what if you want to talk to your partner but you don't know what to say because of all the things I said, like, are they going to be mad at me? Right. Are they be offended? So I give tools like the compliment sandwich, okay? okay? So here's how, here's how you do the compliment sandwich. I love this one because we, okay, so let's say you want to give your partner feedback. Yeah. And you're like, I can't just, first of all, we've never talked about sex. How am I going to come out and say it? So the compliment sandwich is things like nestled between the bread are two really great, the, the, two, the two pieces of bread are compliments like mm. things that you just you know i love the sex that we're having it's yeah. been so great and i've this is how we do it because someone's listening to this show right now they're like i want to have an internal orgasm how do i tell my partner that yeah. this is how you do it you'd say think of one thing that you are just loving about your partner and your sex life mm. so the first part would be i've just been thinking about how hot our sex has been lately uh, i love when we make out during sex that mm. really gets me turned on and going mm. i'm thinking you know we could make out more mm. um that would be great and i'm realizing that i was listening to ed Milet's show and i heard this thing about internal orgasms i realized when we make out um hopefully we make out more i'm really hoping we could spend more time on my orgasms because i know you always have an orgasm which is mm. i love seeing you orgasm mm. and i think if we could spend more time maybe figuring out what makes me feel Feel good i've heard about these different kinds of orgasms then the third part is that i know that we would be even better lovers to each other and can you imagine where our sex life's going to go mm. so you end it with like the first thing is a compliment the second one is the request of could you go down on me more mm. could we get a sex try whatever you think is going to get you to more of those orgasms yeah. and the third one is why it's going the third part of the end of the sandwich is these are how why it would be so great for both of us yeah both of us don't you think that you when the longer you're with somebody that it like it, you fall into patterns and like yes. this is just sort of what we do mm -hmm. right and i gotta say this to everybody you know i prior to meeting you if you go back and look at interviews that i've been on for the last 10 years people say you know what's the key to a good relationship they look communication trust all those things true but the happiest couples that i know they have real physical intimacy still mm -hmm. long after the beginning of the relationship i have to imagine part of that is that it's not the same every single time, yeah, right? Exactly. So like, just one thing I want people to speak to, like if you're thinking about your own relationship right now, you know, I, I mean, it's like literally like when, where, how, position, time of day, everything begins to be like a pattern and very similar. And then maybe that pattern diminishes over time. It doesn't happen quite as much because it's just, it's the same predictable thing mm -hmm. every time. Is that a big issue you it's hear a about? huge issue. I'm yeah. so glad you brought that up. The majority of us have sex in the same way, at the same time, in the same position, in the same room, over and over mm. and over and over again. If I, you know, I like chicken, but if I had chicken every single night for dinner for the rest of my life, yeah. I would not be, I'd want, can we just have pizza? Can we right. suck that? So it's the same thing that happens to our sex life. What we crave the most in relationships to keep it interesting and hot is we crave variety. We crave spontaneity. Yeah. We want something to be, you know, variety, spontaneity, just something a little bit different. And since we don't really know how to mix it up, it becomes the same. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking, I was listening to one of your podcasts. I was listening to your podcast about freedom. You did mm -hmm. one about like freedom yeah. and letting go. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this is such a great analogy for sex. You were talking about that we all like, imagine that our life is like a hundred room mansion that we yeah. lived in, and right? And there's yeah. one room and we live in that one room, but you could go outside that room yeah. and there's so much life to live, yeah. but we're in one room. I was like, that is our sex life. We all live in one room. Mm -hmm. And if you just walk outside the door and you're like, I'm going to try some lube tonight. Yeah. 
Lube could change your life. We're not going to have sex in our bedroom. We're going to have sex in the living room. Mm. We're going to we're gonna get a hotel room for the night. We're going to mix up the environment, the atmosphere. We're going to read a book about sex. We're going we're gonna to go to like, go to the Sex Family website and download a quiz. I have something called the Yes No Maybe list, and it has like 80 sex acts. Yes. And it has... I mean, literally, it has things on it that might you may never have tried before, like maybe spanking or, Mm -hmm. you know, but it also has like taking a bath together, kissing, making out, um, oral sex, and you and your partner could do it. It's like, I try to make it fun. I try to gamify it. Is it a yes? Is it a no? Is it a maybe? And you just might find there's 80 things on there. Maybe you found that you both like dirty talk and you never knew that. Yes. Maybe it's time to start talking dirty. Then you could flip to the dirty talk chapter and start doing it, but... No one, you know, I, I want people to realize that you can get out of this cycle just because you've been with someone for 20 years. It doesn't mean that your sex life is over. In fact, it just means you didn't quite have the tools to keep it going. And that's okay. Like, please be compassionate with yourself and know that, like, most people don't. But if you know there's something you want to try, yeah. you know, you can definitely mix it up and get it hot. Yeah, make and it the reason hot. this is so keep important is so that you can try it with the person you're with. And so that this stuff is a really important topic. And so, you know, I, do you think, let's just be real for a minute. I'm a dude and you're a lady. <laughs> yes. And so is this stuff that we're talking about, and it's okay if it is, more the need of a woman than a man? Meaning, is the man like, look, I, I, I know what I like <laughs> and like I want to get this going and then like I'd like a sandwich and I want to watch Sports Center. Right. And so the woman is more like, no, I need more variety or foreplay or this. Or is it actually not gender specific? And the fact is, if the man gave himself more of these experiences and um, different, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, opportunities sexually, that he would enjoy it more too? Or do you think you're speaking more from a female perspective than a man's? I actually, you know, after all these years, I have to say that it is pretty split. And it is men and women both need this variety and they need the spontaneity. They need something. They need need the new things. Yes, it's easier for men to have an orgasm and to have pleasure. That is Mm -hmm. true. To roll over, watch Sports Center. That is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. However, I think for like longevity and for intimacy to be really hot and keep it interesting and exciting, Mm -hmm. I think it's a need of, of both men and women to continue to, to talk about it. Um, I think that, and in fact, studies have shown that it's actually women who get m- bored in longer-term relationships. Usually about four years in, it had shown that women's desire goes down without the variety and the excitement and the newness. It's and- interesting because my friends, there's a common thing with most of my friends most of my life, which is like vacation sex. And they're like, why it, you just said it's the best. Like, (laughs) why is that always better? And I've thought about that before. Like, why did everybody always say, and I think one of the things is just like the environment's changed. You're not in the same room at the same time. So if that's actually true, how, how can you create vacation sex every week in your normal place where you live right and so it is the it's the variety it's Mm -hmm. the change i think it's the variety that changes scenery maybe it's the kids aren't screaming and you're alone and you realize wow he really is still handsome and she really is still beautiful i don't know what that is but it's something right it's because exactly variegation sex i'm like those are my two favorite words because Mm -hmm. you're like can we please get out of we're because we're having sex Mm -hmm. in our bedroom staring at the same ceiling Mm -hmm. you know the same pile of laundries in the corner we're hearing the kids like we are the we're just everything is the same and so it just doesn't we have and we have the stressors of home too Mm -hmm. the dishes are still in the sink Mm -hmm. it's just it's not the environment that is conducive to us feeling really turned on. No, we go on vacation. Someone else is changing the sheets. This is a whole new, we've never been in this bathroom together. We've never mm. been in this bed before. We open up the curtains and so there's a breeze coming in from the ocean. You know, I've done so many studies and had so many conversations with people where I've said, what's the most memorable time you've had sex? And like nine out of 10 times, it's like in Hawaii, yes. like on the beach and the first palm trees. And I was looking up at the, out of the ocean. Yes. And so I think at home, we can create that so, and I think, again, it's creating an environment where you have more newness than you have more of the same. And it could just be like you wore something sexy to bed that you haven't worn in a while mm-hmm. or you, you know, tried a new position. I've got tons of positions in the book or on my website or my thousands of podcasts. I just have little things like that. I once met a woman. I never forget this. I was somewhere. She was probably like in her 70s and she pulled me aside at a dinner party. As often happens, I'm talking about mm-hmm. sex and everyone's like, I've got a tip or I have a mm-hmm. question. And she's like. You know what the best sex advice? She'd been married for like 40 years. The best sex advice I can give you. I'm like, what? She's like, wear a wig. <laughs> She's like, I have a closet full of wigs. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I come out as a blonde. blonde. And sometimes I'm a brunette. Yeah. Sometimes I've got long red hair. Mm-hmm. And it's like, 
not only for for her partner but for her she's like mm. i feel a little bit different and that's why like role playing i know everyone's gonna be like oh my god that's so awkward mm. i know that my partner knows that i'm not delivering pizza tonight like i'm yeah. not the pizza guy right <laughs> right but it's just it's like you can play like what's your name like sometimes i see my partner like he'll just he'll just walk in and i'll be like hey what's your name you know just like a joke just to kind of mix it up in the moment and be mm. like what's it's something different. And for a moment there, I'm suspended to think like, oh, well, this would be kind of fun. I'm like, well, what's your name? And it just, you remember that like, this is someone that I haven't been sleeping with all this time. And it's just somebody a little bit different, a little bit hot. So we can all do that. And that's why I provide tools for people to like, even just having the conversation. You like if it. you've been with someone and you've yeah. never talked about it, sometimes just saying like, here's a great place to start. Because I love to give people actionable tools. Yes, that's what I love. Tonight when you're at dinner, say to your partner, babe, what are the three most memorable times you've had sex? I'm going to write it down, you write it down, and let's exchange notes. Mm. Right? Not not sex in your lifetime, but sex with each other. What are the three okay. most memorable times we've had sex? Okay, we've had sex. How fun to go down memory lane and be like, oh, yeah. wow, yeah, I forgot about that time at your, mm. your parents' house when they were, they almost walked in. That was so scary, but yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Or the time when we were on that cruise ship. <laughs> or, and then you, then you have memory lane, which actually spikes dopamine mm. and adrenaline and, and, mm. and oxytocin, which is the cuddle yeah. hormone. So there's actually connective mm. elements there that are going to get you guys so excited cool. and aroused. Again. That could be your foreplay for the evening. So good. I'm glad you clarified our best sex. Wouldn't that be <laughs> right. true? Give me the three best. <laughs> moments of your sex life it's three completely different people You're like babe i you. wasn't there that wasn't me <laughs> what's we got in common not me <laughs> exactly. make sure it's with your partner I or what that. are the three sexiest things or and then and then when people do things like the yes no maybe list i have them prioritize it like what are the three that are most important to you mm. and you're like oh then you learn like oh you really liked we used to give each other massages okay let's bring back the massage element let's make out more and let's take more baths together i love that you know your site's really important and I usually don't promote sites on the show every single week, but it really is. This is a, for many people, if you've never had it and you probably haven't, let's talk about our sex, babe. That's a really difficult thing. But really using difficult. your quizzes and the things on there and the tools and the questions is a really convenient excuse to start the dialogue. Yeah. And like you said, you might find that there's an overlap and like, you've always wanted this. I couldn't be, I didn't ever know you wanted that. I want you to speak to one thing though, because okay. I think even as I think about that, how important it is to not shame your partner when they do share something. Because this is probably the most intimate, revealing thing to go, you know what I would like? I'd like you to, um, like you to choke me, mm -hmm. or I would like you to lick me here, or I would like you to, I want to cuddle more, or I want us to kiss more, or I want you to wear a wig, mm -hmm. or whatever it might be, right. or, I, you know, or I want to wear a wig. Mm -hmm. That can be, feel so, even with someone you've been with a long time, yeah. someone you love so much, you're so vulnerable with, you're like, I'm now telling them something about, it's almost like a secret, isn't it? Uh -huh, it's almost like, yeah. we've known each other five or 10 <laughs> years, and now I'm telling you a secret about me that I please don't judge me on it's got to be yeah. really critical that you not judge them because you could really take your relationship yeah. the wrong direction right absolutely i'm so glad you brought this up because i cover a whole chapter that i call it the pleasure thieves okay these are the things that are stealing our pleasure and they are stress mm. trauma and shame mm. shame is so deeply embedded especially when it comes to our sex into our character into our being and you know, I talk about all the where way places it starts. It could just be something innocent in childhood where we had our hands on our pants. We might have been pre-verbal and our parents said, don't do that. That's mm. dirty. That's wrong. And then forever we feel that, well, touching my genitals is shameful. Mm. And, and Or we, you know, had an incident growing up or, you know, shame comes from so many areas. Mm. So I really do. I help people realize that, first of all, where is the shame message coming from? Mm. And I've, I've like also tools to be able to kind of journal about this and think like, where did I first learn this? And then try to get rid of these pleasure thieves because they are stealing our pleasure. Pleasure is such an important part of our overall health and wellness. And I actually dare to say that pleasure is productive. The mm. more pleasure we have, we'll find that we are more productive, we're getting everything done, yeah. because, but we we often look at pleasure as like this carrot that we get once we do something. Like, mm. if I run my, 10 miles a day, then I can have the cake, or then I can go shopping if I do this thing. But when you integrate pleasure into your life, we're much more likely to have more productivity mm. and and more pleasure and connection to our partner. But the shame element is realizing that, I'm gonna give people another tip here. If you've never talked about sex with your partner, and let's say shame is something that's, mm. I just, I'm so embarrassed to tell my partner this because I feel like they're going to judge yeah. me, our relationship's gonna be over, they're gonna mm. think, or, or I can't believe I've been with them for so long and they don't know that I have the secret fantasy or mm -hmm. they don't know that I've been faking orgasms. Mm -hmm. I hear this from women all the time, mm -hmm. they're like, 
I've been my partner for so long and I'm faking it. What do I do? Mm. I'm so shameful. I'm so scared. Mm. So there's all these reasons. I think the first thing is um, using my three T's of communication, timing, tone, and turf. I want people to use this for every awkward conversation, but it works with sex conversations. And mm. this is really, really important to remember, okay? The timing is when you are in a really good place. You're not, remember this, you're not halt. Hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. You know, sometimes we think we're in those places where, like, this is a great time to tell my partner what I want. It's like, no, that's a terrible time. Mm -hmm. You are chilling. Maybe it's pre-date. Maybe you're on vacation. You're just in a good, in a good place. The tone is curious and honest and open and a little bit like and, and kind of slow and light. It's like, hey, I was listening to the show today and I realized we, I love our sex life, mm -hmm. but we've never actually talked about our sex life. Yeah. Is that something you'd be interested in? Because what I'm hearing is that we'd be such better lovers to each other if we actually talked about it. Would you mm -hmm. be into that? And then the third part is turf. Believe it or not, the turf for talking about sex is outside the bedroom. Mm. When you are, you know, people think like, well, it, we're having sex in the bedroom. We should talk about it there. No, you want a clean, you want a clean slate. Maybe it's when you're on a road trip mm. or you're, because when you're on a road trip, you might be driving, but you don't have to make eye contact because that's the hardest part. So you're like, hey, I mm. think we should talk about our sex life. Or you're going for a walk with a dog. You know, somewhere where you are Great outside advice. the bedroom. Because the bedroom, is, I think, should be for sleeping and for sex and for mm. nothing else. You don't want to have difficult conversations in the bedroom. So that's where you start. And know, too, that, that if you've never talked about it, it's going to take a few conversations. You don't want it all. Like, if you've got this deep-seated thing that you're like, I've been dying to tell my partner, it doesn't have to be in the first conversation. The mm. first conversation could just be an inquiry. Would you be okay having conversations about our sex life? Would you be willing to go on a journey with me where we get to look at our past and mm. think about our future and what matters now? Because the other thing I want to remind people is the sex that you want today probably isn't the same as it was five years ago. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the same as it was 10 years ago. It might even differ from month to month. I know, especially for women, there's different times a month where mm -hmm. different positions feel better or different things. We have more desires or we're just not feeling great in our bodies. I mean, actually, I think it's for men too. So just being open to say sex changes over time. Mm -hmm. There's so much more on the menu. Like, I guess I just want to give people the menu. Yeah. I want people, I want them to know what's in that mansion. I want them to know what's in those haunted rooms. Like, mm -hmm. what are the options out there? Where can we choose? Where can we go left and right? And like, how do we do this? Because I also understand that people don't have a menu. They don't even know where to go. So that's why they're in that sexual straight jacket. Yeah. That's, yeah. I'm just thinking as we're talking, honestly, I'm so really glad you're here. Because I debated today. Honestly, I tell the audience, yeah. I debated today, like this could be an uncomfortable topic. And a lot of times people listen to my show with their kids in the car. <laughs> so today would be different. And um, I'm really grateful we're doing this mm. because I love everybody that listens to this. And I, it breaks my heart to think some people will go through the vast majority of their lives and never really experience the pleasure of mm -hmm. the ultimate extension of love mm -hmm. is to be able to have that physical intimacy with somebody and you know i was thinking about that vacation sex that we were talking about a minute ago the other thing element that happens is there's just more love present mm -hmm. you know and, and focusing on how much you love one another I, I imagine can only intensify that connection and the depth of the connection is just focusing on how much you love one another not just the physical parts of where to touch mm -hmm. me or where to do this or that but it's also the emotional part of it Mm -hmm. how much you really love one another. And so many of you are working so hard in your life. You're raising families. You're growing yourself. You're growing your business. And you could get to a other side of your life and go, I missed out on like one of God's greatest <laughs> blessings he bestows upon us is the physical pleasure we enjoy with somebody that we love mm -hmm. in our life, right? And, yeah. And so what would you say to someone who says, man, I, you know, it's been a while. We've, we, we've been down this road a while. We have I'm just going to be real, everybody, mm -hmm. probably less sex than you used to. Mm -hmm. And it's not as good as it once was. And now you've gotten busy. Maybe there's kids running around the house or you both have two jobs or you're going to get your workout and you got all these other things. You're just like, man, I just don't feel like doing it most mm -hmm. of the time. What would you say to somebody who says that to you? Like, I just, it's just become a pattern of not making it a priority. How do we switch that? Mm. Obviously, talking about it yep. is one thing. That's, yeah, well, talking about it. Uh, but the, the next thing would be prioritizing, prioritizing it, prioritizing mm. your pleasure mm. and saying, like, this is something that's important to me. And that's why, actually, in, in Smart Sex, in my book, I write these five pillars because I realize of sexual intelligence because I realize that, like, 
we prioritize everything else in our life and sex is always like in the back burner it's like the bastard child of the health of the wellness yes. industry it's like sex should just feel good without prioritizing it should mm. just magically happen without any work great without yeah. any work yep. it takes work so mm. really it's saying like would you be open to prioritizing it like mm -hmm. making sure and then there's a lot of different ways to go about it first i want to say also is that it's not it, it isn't for most people i always say it's not as great as it once was so it's prioritizing that we're gonna we're gonna find out how we can connect to each other with each other again intimately mm -hmm. and realize that sex isn't just about penetration it mm -hmm. is about intimacy like you said it's mm -hmm. about you know, sometimes it's just giving your partner a massage it's mm -hmm. making out it's holding hands it's feeling close again mm -hmm. sometimes sex becomes this thing that we avoid because we're like, oh God, there's my partners. They're coming up and kiss me. That means sex has to happen. And then we avoid it and we push them away. Mm. I don't have time for sex right now. We go from like zero to sex. Mm. And there's all this like beautiful stuff in the middle of it where mm. it's making out or it's, you know, a lot of people I tell them massage. How about one night you give your partner a massage with nothing in return? Mm. And no, you don't have to go to massage school. It could just be, you know, mm. rubbing their shoulders, their back, mm. getting them with some coconut oil and yep. just rubbing their feet, something like that without the, without the need to, to uh, you're just receiving that night you're just giving and then you're receiving the next time you're doing it you know you're doing the the receiving or the giving and you switch and so it's like defining like what does that look like for us and then also i want people to figure out and kind of hack this when is the best time for sex because i'm a huge fan of scheduling sex i tell people this all the time and hear me out everyone before you're like that is not hot like mm -hmm. that is not a turn on like i do not want to look at my my calendar and be like pick up dry cleaning yeah. get kids from school have sex yeah. like you yeah. just like killed my arousal yeah no, but the thing is, if it's just think about the things that you talk about this too all the time, yeah. you got to prioritize what's yes. important your workouts, yes, you know, the talks with your staff, yes. the talks with your kids. You got to put sex on the menu, you got to yeah. put sex on the calendar. And like, this is the night. And if you know, the other thing I get people to do is like, what's keeping you from sex? Like, what is it? Well, we haven't got a babysitter in so long, we never take a vacation. The house is a mess. Like, I know for me, like, if my house is a mess and I haven't finished things or it's too cold in the house, like, or the sheets aren't clean. I'm not going to want sex. Mm. So how do we think about like, well, what does get me in the mood for sex? Mm. Well, I know I've worked out. I'm hydrated. Mm. Um, I've had, I've cleared resentments with my partner. Make sure there's a babysitter. Better yet, we got a hotel room for the night or, you know, whatever it is. What are all the factors? That's why that great exercise of what are the most memorable times we've had sex? That's also like pure gold. Because mm. you can go, okay, most memorable time. What were all the elements there? And then reverse engineer it. Mm -hmm. How do we create that scenario mm -hmm. so we can have more of that? Yeah. And even if you were in Hawaii and you're not in Hawaii, well, what is it about Hawaii? It's clean sheets. Mm -hmm. If it's room service, like maybe you can make sure that you have all the snacks that you love. Mm -hmm. If it's what, maybe you go for a walk that night. So you're out in nature and you're feeling that. Maybe, maybe you, it's some cocktails. Some cocktails. Right? Like maybe it's that. Literally right? get some umbrellas yes. with some yes. pineapple. Yes. You know, it's all sensory experiences. Well, you're a million. I love you. I think this is so good because I got to tell you that I have a friend of mine recently. You said something earlier I want to just touch on, especially for the men. And uh, she goes, um, well, I know when he wants to have sex because he uh, kissed me. Mm. And so what you just said is like it's a lot of times with us men, I think, and I don't want to do gender specific stuff because it's too way too big a generalization and probably not fair to either. Having said that, though, you know. Well, you know, he only kisses me when he wants to have sex. He's only getting really nice. He only tells me I'm really beautiful when he wants to have yes. sex. And so there becomes this resistance almost like, oh, I know what you're doing. You're playing me here. You're setting me up for tonight, right? Exactly. Instead of just having that be present. That's why whatever your faith is or your love and your relationship, I think it's got to be present constantly to create an environment where the physical intimacy is the logical step next. And what you said about scheduling it, let's just be real. In this day and age, as busy as we all are, what doesn't go scheduled doesn't happen. Exactly. And it's you're like, you fit it in somewhere. And it's like, and by the way, I think sometimes the fact that you schedule it tells somebody how important they are to exactly. you. Exactly. Right? Like, you really matter to me. It's not like something I'll fit in in between the stuff that really matters to me. Mm -hmm. This is a priority for me. So yeah. I'm really big. Okay, now we're going to get kind of in some nitty gritty, like... <laughs> tangible physical stuff here so this is where it gets a little uncomfy for me but i want to go there you <laughs> here we go <laughs> you um i want to know in in a woman's case do they know what gives them pleasure in other words is there some benefit to experiencing one's self to figure out what areas do feel good so that you mm -hmm. can tell your male partner what areas feel good and are some women gone through their lives or men, 
But you said it's easier for a man to orgasm, so I'm asking about women. Yeah. They're at a point in their life where they're 25 or 30, and maybe they don't know exactly yeah. what. Because what I learned from you is that clitoral <laughs> area, that vulva area, there's different parts that uh-huh. may feel better than other parts. And perhaps experiencing that by yourself first could help you yes. communicate it to another uh, the person that yes, you love. Ed, I love that you're bringing it up. What okay. we're talking about is self pleasure. Right. We're talking about masturbation. Mm-hmm. And masturbation, again, talking about shame, there's so much like shame around it. Or maybe you grew up in a household where you were told that it was wrong and you're going to, you know, you're going to grow hair on your palms or whatever mm-hmm. all, the, all the old tropes are about that. But actually, masturbation is a really healthy part, a really Mm. important part of being sexually healthy overall because that's how you learn what feels good to you. Your Mm. partner is not a mind reader. Mm. He's not going to come in and know exactly how it all works. And in fact- Or or she. Or she, exactly. She doesn't know either. I think everyone, I think masturbation is great when you're in a relationship, when Mm. you're out of a relationship. And what I hear from a lot of people um, in in my listeners too are like, I caught my partner masturbating. It doesn't mean that like they don't love me anymore. They're not into me or is it Mm. cheating? And, and I'm just going to say it's about like it's really a it's a really healthy part about understanding your it's connection with yourself. Mm-hmm. You're learning things. You have to worry about like your partner looking at you there yet. Are you there yet? I mean, mm-hmm. I, I for myself, I don't think I masturbated till I was like in my like late 20s, mm-hmm. mid to late 20s. Um, I, I realized that like I. I just never thought about it. I was like, well, I have a partner. I don't need to. And I hear mm-hmm. the people a lot of time, well, I don't need to. I have a partner. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you and I'm encouraging you, just take some time alone to say, like, what? take a mirror and, like, look between your legs. Mm-hmm. What's actually going on there? Mm-hmm. Do you notice when you touch certain parts that it feels good? Does it not feel as good? That's how you learn. And then you get to tell your partner, like, look what I discovered. Like, mm-hmm. look what feels really good to me. Because mm-hmm. you're responsible for your own pleasure. And I used to blame partners, too. It's like, well, they didn't give me an orgasm. And they didn't do this for me. And now, knowing what I know after doing this for so long, I realize like they, they, did, they have no way of knowing because mm-hmm. everyone's different. If you, if you put a hundred women in a room, and they were all touching themselves, they would all be doing something differently. Mm-hmm. They would. It's different for everyone. There's not like this universal. Mm-hmm. I mean, the parts might be the same, but the, if is it a tapping? Is it a light motion with their fingers? Are they on their stomach or are they on their back? Mm-hmm. We all learn different ways to pleasure. So have some fun with it and get curious. Right. And I'm not. I want to be clear. Like, if you have an understanding in your relationship where you do feel like, oh, they're imagining yeah. someone else, that's bad. Then you know, maybe that's not right for you. Or there's a religious reason that you may not yeah. do it. I get all of that, but I'm saying in general, in general, it's it's pretty difficult to express to somebody that which gives you pleasure if you're unaware of what that is. Right, exactly. And so, you know, there's there's a, a way to experience that. There's a great hack for that. And this again, once you can get to the point of like masturbation's mm-hmm. okay, do it together. Like mm-hmm. mutual masturbation mm-hmm. together if you're both doing it you're like oh because not only can it be really sexy that's a but really like, interesting that's a really really, really good fun. suggestion yeah because then you're like oh i didn't realize that you moved your hand that way so now when i touch you mm. i didn't know that you wrapped your hand around if you're mm. a man like around your shaft like mm. i'll do that then the next mm. time because i don't i mean i'm just sitting here trying to figure it out too mm. so then you're learning so it's hot but then you're like oh that's what you do mm. i'm gonna do that too the next time i touch you right i'm so glad we're talking about show this. and pl- show and, show and, and tell. It's, it's not been as completely painful or as uncomfortable for me <laughs> as I thought it, as I thought I'm it would be. I think it's great. You're I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like really grateful that we are. What's your definition of a pleasure thief? A pleasure thief is something that comes into your life and that is really just pr- over, ever present and is keeping you from having pleasure, joy, or orgasms. And mm. the three that I've identified that are the most, that are stealing your pleasure all the time is stress, okay. ang- anxiety, worry, angst, all of those things are stealing your pleasure. If you are really anxious about or worried about money, your job, insecurities around, I mean, and actually, I don't want to say this about genders anymore, but I used to say, like, if, men's worry, if a man's worried about money, like, he also should be worried about his erection. You know, it's all yeah. closely related, yeah. right? So stress, um, trauma, if you've had any kind of trauma in your life, and I'm even talking, like, it doesn't have to be, like, a big T trauma. It could be a little T trauma, like, just things that have happened that really, you know, have, have impacted your, your self-confidence. Um, those that's going to impact you. I think therapy is important for everybody. It's essentially just getting a second opinion on your life, which who doesn't need that? It's like a business coach for your mental health. And then shame. And we covered shame. Those are the pleasure thieves. That's mm-hmm. what's keeping us. Our, and also, like, going back to when I say stress, it's your busyness. It's doing everything else but. And I also want to remind you that sex is like a muscle. 
and sex begets sex. Mm. So the more sex you have, that's why I love masturbation, self-touch, self-pleasure, talking about sex. You get to put that all under the sexual umbrella. The more you keep sex top of mind, Mm. the more sex you're going to want to have. Okay. Let's talk about the two types of lubrication. Okay. You call it communication is lubrication. Yes. And then there's actual lubrication, lubrication. which you're a big, big, I'm a huge big fan, fan of. of. Like that could be my legacy. Remember Steve Jobs? Like, I want a computer on <laughs> every lube, desk. Your legacy is lube. I want a lube on every nightstand. <laughs> I brought you some lube. Okay, I oh, brought you some play- gift bag? Yes, okay. I brought you. I brought you a gift bag and a okay. little massager, of of this lube that I'm actually uh, chief sexologist of a company called Playground. Mm. And why I love this lube is because it's safe for women and safe for men. But I love all lube mm. because here's the thing about lube. Lube gets a bad rap, and yeah. here's why. I'm a huge fan of. First off, we are told that if we have to lose lose lube as a woman, something's wrong with us. Mm-hmm. We are not wet enough. We're not turned on. And then, oh, if I'm not turned on, it's my, my partner's going to feel bad. And then for men, we're like, I didn't do something. It was probably my penis size. Like, mm-hmm. why isn't she turned on? But let me just clear everyone's mind now and tell you that your wetness level is not an indicator of arousal. You can be really turned on and not wet. You can be wet and not turned on. Really? Plus, your wetness is not consistent. Certain times of month, we're wetter than others. Mm-hmm. Um, certain th- foods we eat, certain medications we take, we just won't be as wet. It's not reliable, okay? Mm-hmm. So you know they tell you to wear sunblock even when there's clouds yes. outside? Yes. So you could still get a burn? Yes. You could still have tears and, and infections if you're too dry. And, th- and so that's why I just say lube on every nightstand. Every time you're having sex, grab for the lube. Just a few drops. I love a squeezable bottle that you just... You know, pour pour on, you know, even if it's sex with yourself or sex with somebody else. And the Kinsey Institute, which is the leading authority, science-backed studies on sex, they did a study and they showed when you had a few drops of lube, just a few drops, you don't need a whole few drops to any sexual situation, that women were 80% more likely to orgasm. Whoa. Because there's all these nerve endings. We talked about the clitoris. And all you do is put a little bit in your hand, you rub it into a clitoris mm-hmm. or the vulva, because there's so many nerve endings. And so yeah. those feel really good when they're well lubricated. Okay. So well, I'm really glad I asked that then, yeah. seriously. Yeah, it's great. It's you know, safety. You know one thing I've, I'm just going to go right into it, so I really <laughs> want to know this. Let me ask, I'll ask you yeah. a better question. What percentage of women actually have actual orgasms with their mate when they're having sex? What's the data say? Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. Only about 20, sometimes 20% of women will have an orgasm mm. during penetration. Okay. 20%. And of those women, it's not every single time. Mm-hmm. We can have sex in other ways. Mm-hmm. And usually it's with a toy mm-hmm. or fingers mm-hmm. or a mouth. Yep. But really... Not with a penis and not during penetration. And I'm so, I'm prepping, believe it or not, I prepped <laughs> and I learned a little bit as a dude, so I know nothing. I'm a dude, right? So, um, but I learned this difference between vaginal and clitoral mm-hmm. orgasm, yeah. the vulva. I've learned these things. Hey, everybody, right. we're going right into this because, like, let's make sex better yeah. in our lives, right? Yeah. And so, really, what I learned from you, correct me if I'm wrong, is more women have. If men, men, you should all know this too. It's <laughs> right. easier for women to have a clitoral orgasm than it is a vaginal yes, orgasm. Exactly. And the reason for that is why? Is because the clitoris, so the clitoris is really the, so the vulva is the external part of the vagina. Yeah. It's the part that we see, um, that we could see from, to, to the naked eye. And the clitoris, which I think we've maybe all sort of heard about the clitoris in recent years or um, in, in our lives perhaps, um, but it's a very understudied organ. Mm. And the only reason the clitoris exists is for female pleasure. And get this, Ed, the re- it's okay, you're comfortable talking about it. We never even study it. Mm. While I was writing Smart Sex, my book, mm. for years, for t- almost two decades I've been doing this, I said the clitoris is 8,000 nerve endings. We came to find out the clitoris now has 12,000 nerve endings. Even more. Like we just found 4,000 more nerve endings. Mm. So anyway, the clitoris is on the outside, and that's typically women, if they talk about, like, oh, I had an orgasm once when I was riding a bike, or I was, mm. you know, a kid, or I, I felt something feel good with the shower head. That's why it's more easily accessible. Mm. So internally, though, is where there's, and the clitoris also extends inside. There's actually deep, there's clitoral, internal clitoral nerves. So mm. mostly how we think of the clitoris is that little bud right mm. up above the vaginal opening, mm. but that's just the beginning of it. Again, there was like, there's the clitoris has legs that extend deep inside, and right. when those are pen- when those are stimulated, then you can have a more internal, full body orgasm. But just side note, and I get into all this, all the different kinds of orgasms yeah. in the book. But 
when the clitoris is stimulated and you have a clitoral orgasm, it's a lot easier to have an internal orgasm because you become more roused and turned on. Okay, so I'm a guy and I don't know this. And by the way, I actually no think one some, knows this. I think some women exactly don't know this, right? No one knows this. And ad. so um, when a woman experiences pleasure from an orgasm, is it a stronger one if it's an internal one? You know, it varies. It varies okay. person to person. Thank God, because we can't. You know, we're all so we're all so different. But they, it's, it tends to be more full bodied. Mm. Uh, many women say that it's more full bodied, and you, yeah, it's a little bit more intense. Okay. You know, one thing we talk about is like orgasms a lot. Do you, does that ha- like that's not the only reason someone has sex no. though, right? So I think the other thing is like feeling pressure to have one can cause it not to happen, exactly. or to think that the experience isn't worthwhile if I don't have one. Exactly. But there's something really beautiful about two people who love each other, just you know, intimately caring for yeah. one another in a, in in a moment. That may not result in the climax at, at any given time. Yeah. So what about that? Like, why is there, I get why there's an obsession because it's like the payoff. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of payoff during it, even without that, right? Exactly. A lot of payoff. I love that you're asking this question because I want to like decenter sex on only being about orgasm yeah. and only being about penetration. You know, orgasm is great. Don't get me wrong. We all love an orgasm. But if you take the pressure off of orgasm and you're like, I'm just going to get curious and I'm just going to breathe and see what it actually feels like to be touched. Um, And you might find that you have an orgasm as a byproduct of not worrying about having an orgasm, which is kind of an amazing side effect of Mm. this process. But just being like, I love making out. I love connection. I love touching and rubbing and pleasure and and penetration feels good. I don't have to have an orgasm. Then, I mean, that's all okay too because that's connection. That's intimacy that's touch and we need that like loneliness is an epidemic um did not touching like we don't some people like i think a lot of us actually require touch mm. and then we stop touching because we're like well if i touch my partner it means that sex has to happen i'm not in the mood for sex so then we stop touching mm. we need it we need to like be connected we need to hug without the pressure of or have sex or everything without the pressure of orgasm so mm. take the pressure off and also be open to the fact that it might not happen during penetration but what else might you need i'm telling you a little bit bit of lube might help a sex toy might help um oral sex might help like that's why this whole fun process of getting into sex might make you realize that there are different paths to pleasure because i do think it's possible for everybody to have more orgasms we just don't really know how to hack it and we think it should only happen in one way yeah so i'm telling you there's so many ways very good all right most awkward question of the entire interview but it's just stuff that when couples get together they ask one another and i think sometimes women feel a pressure to be able to do something that they're not doing so when a woman squirts is she having an actual physical orgasm and i ask this because i think men want to know what's happening and then number two i think sometimes women feel a pressure to do that and maybe that's not how their body responds i don't know so what's the answer mm-hmm. on that the answer to that is that you can women can squirt an orgasm and they can orgasm and not squirt but every time you squirt it is not an orgasm no okay. sometimes it is sometimes it isn't okay so if someone's not doing that that doesn't mean they're not turned on by their lover or their partner no. or if they're not squirting i think there's been a lot of pressure in recent years because of porn for mm-hmm. women to squirt like when i first started this almost two decades ago no one asked me about squirting and then in porn and everyone started seeing squirting so everyone wants to know about it so yeah i think that the majority of women can learn to squirt okay. and if they do they may or may not coincide with orgasm okay thank case you. by case basis okay good thank you for that so since i asked an awkward one for the women let me ask an <laughs> awkward one for the men um size how much does size matter in being able to pleasure a woman or does it vary from woman to woman mm. size does not matter as much as you think at all. In fact, I find that most men are way more obsessed with the size of their penis than women are. Mm. And typically it's about girth, if anything, Mm. than the length of a penis. The girth is really just, and that's the the women's vagina is the most sensitive, about two inches inside. Okay. So it's really, it's... You know, um, now I'm going to ask you a backwards question to your work. Because I want to not challenge something, but look at it from a different perspective. So... I worry about desensitization in our mm-hmm. society to making it much more difficult to have attraction to the person that you're with. So I know you've talked about, in your opinion, you know, like maybe watching porn together is a healthy thing. And, but I worry about the reverse of that. Uh-huh. I worry about men becoming addicted to that, particularly yeah. men or women. But I also, setting that aside, I think there should be some 
caution or warning or conversation about desensitization mm -hmm. that we have in our culture with what you can see on social media, what you can get on your phone so quickly that sort of dulls us to the imagery of what we're gonna see in front of us or experience in front of us. So although I understand your argument for it being a resource, would you agree with me also yeah. that if you're having some of those issues in your relationship, you may need to evaluate whether or not you're showing yourself things too regularly with filters, with, you know, absolutely stuff like that, with stuff you see on your phone that just makes like the real world not <laughs> seem as appealing yeah. as what you can see in this perfectly manicured thing you're getting on the feed on your phone. Mm -hmm. I really wonder, in fact, I believe that that's to some extent probably contributing to some of the issues we're seeing in society. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, I say like, yeah, pornography can be used. It's really titillating. Mm -hmm. Couples can watch together. And that can be really cool to kind of, wow, that's something else we're going to try tonight. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch some some porn. And there are some sites that create more like female-friendly porn that I actually really like because it shows real bodies mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But yeah, that so that could be great. But no, there are so many problems with we will have with porn because they they become reliant on it. They they keep escalating it that's what it comes to problem too and there's lots of controversy around using the term addiction when it comes to sex so I'm, I'm really not but but you guys get what i'm saying that there's there's ways that you could become attached to it and when it's not there mm -hmm. it's harder to get aroused with a partner mm -hmm. you're like why isn't she bringing 18 friends mm -hmm. why doesn't right. she look this way yeah. we keep escalating the level of intensity of the porn and so if you find that happening and if you find that porns become something that you're like really reliant on then notice that become aware of it you know the first step is awareness and then mm -hmm. say you know what i'm going to try to just kind of use my imagination or i have some great tools in the book like mindful masturbation practice where you kind of integrate mm -hmm. meditation and masturbation hear me out it's a really cool practice because then you're just like breathing and you're like getting curious like i, I mean i've men do this like i didn't even realize that the underside of my penis under the shaft is where this most sensitive part is because i've never really thought about it and mm -hmm. so that's where there's so much pleasure potential so yeah if you're if you feel like your porn is getting to be too much that's so great you recognize it. Maybe you just put a timer on it. Like, I'm just going to watch for Because I hate to tell people to go cold turkey and anything. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're like, I'm going to watch it, you know, not going to watch it the first 10 minutes, but maybe I'll watch it for a minute at the end. Or you could try going cold turkey and just going back to your imagination. But I just want people to have compassion with themselves. But also notice that, like, there's other ways I can get turned on. I yeah. can think about things. I can, I, I can I'm focus big, on my breath. I'm, I'm big just because I hear from so many men. I really believe there's a detail. Uh, uh, desensitivity there that is. takes place. Why I can't say that word today, I don't know. Yeah. I'm really concerned about it. I think for those of you that are yeah. lacking intimacy in your totally. relationship, that's the first place to evaluate. Just I, I do so think you, I do it. think cold turkey is a okay, good suggestion. Good. I do think um, what you're seeing on your Instagram feed, what you're putting into your mind and your your um, visual experience okay. really does have an impact on you long term. I understand the other argument for it being a stimulant for somebody. But I just feel like it's got to the point in our culture where I, I really believe it's contributing to lack of sex, lack of intimacy, and pressure on people to, particularly women, to have to live up to what's mm. being seen on these screens and do things that's being done that's not healthy. I'm with and you. At the same time, and, and also just, it's just not very realistic in the real world. No, so. I, I think you're, I mean, yeah, I love that you're saying that because if this is what you, I, I hear this from men too, and I hear this from women, and I think that just to remind you, like, porn is not real. <laughs> it's right. a script. Yep. They're cheating towards camera. They're not really having pleasure. I watch porn sometimes, and I'm like, there is no way that sh that feels good to her. Mm -hmm. I'm like, sh you are not near her clitoris at all. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just remind people that, like, if you're finding that there's a way to kind of rewire your brain towards what genuinely, authentically feels good to you in connection with yourself and with a partner. So, I think I'm this matters, you. everyone, because um, I'm talking about the, the topic of sex in general. What I worry about in relationships that I'm seeing is people who are now just married to their buddy or their friend. And at some point in a relationship, I, I, like, I don't want to just live with my buddy. I mean, I have lots of friends. I don't want to be married to them. And so one of the things that separates a marriage is the, is the covenant of it, but it's also the intimacy of it. It's the physical mm -hmm. nature of it. It's the connection that you should have in a healthy relationship. And that's why Emily's work matters deeply. I, there's not a lot of people doing the work that you do. And I really want to Thanks. acknowledge you for it. I'm excited about <laughs> the book, you. too. What else would you suggest to somebody like that we haven't covered where you say, listen, if you're having an issue in your relationship mm. in, in, or even if someone's single listening to this yeah. and they've got like apprehension <laughs> about 
you know, sex in their life. What, what other resources or ideas do you have for somebody that just says, here's a way to improve your overall confidence level mm. that you, I think confidence has a lot to do with, with our desire to have sex and, and to believe that we're worthy of it even, you know, especially for single people. But even if you're in a relationship and he used to really seem to desire you and now he doesn't, you've lost that confidence or vice versa. She used to really seem to want you and she doesn't. I think confidence is one of these words that mm. is lost when it comes to sex. Yeah, no, it's a, gr- it's a great question. Sexual confidence. Like mm-hmm. how do we have mm-hmm. confidence even when we're not feeling great about ourselves? Mm-hmm. Which by the way, confidence is a spectrum. It's a, it's a practice. For me, it's a daily practice. Like you mm-hmm. could have a day where you're feeling feeling confident or months then when you're not confident and you're just recognizing that the things go into confidence is the messages that we tell ourselves mm-hmm. is the self-talk so listen if you're walking around all day in this body and you're like oh god i've gained weight or right. i don't want to be naked with anybody yes. or i hate my body or i'm feeling bad and then you get to the bedroom and you're like oh i should just all of a sudden feel sexy and feel great like that's going to be really really hard to do and i mm-hmm. think that if there's any another I, I can't think of a better reason to start to work on our own self-confidence and do some exercises around body acceptance or body neutrality i'm not even gonna say body love because mm-hmm. you might never love your body that's mm-hmm. okay but mm-hmm. you could learn to like not hate your body yeah and and i have you know a lot of things i talk about is like um looking standing in front of the mirror like looking at your body and trying to be appreciative and i know people are like oh god i never do that well guess what you if you're not comfortable with your own body, how are you going to feel comfortable with yeah. someone else in the room? Yeah. Like now you're having a party with your body and you don't yeah. want to be there. Yeah. So there's little baby steps you can do when you get out of the shower. A lot of us don't even look in the mirror ever. We're just rushing, rushing. But you could take a moment. I could give you, I always know people are like, I'm not saying for 20 minutes, but like for a minute, mm. you can just stand and look and breathe for a moment yeah. and be like, what do I like about my body yes. today? Yes. Oh God, yeah, my hair is looking good. You know, oh, God, look at my shoulders. Yeah, they're coming up and doing some reps in the gym. Okay, I I don't hate my legs. My legs, actually, they got me from A to B to C today. I like those things. And then you can dry off and get dressed for work. But try to take a moment to be appreciate. Be Have some moment of gratitude for you. Connect to your body. We are not, you are not separate. Your body is with you, getting you from place to place to place your entire life. And we work on negative, I think, you know, you talk a lot about mental health Mm -hmm. and negative body image Mm -hmm. and negative self-talk. But if you have it towards your body, this is the day that I just want you to think of five things right now. Even if you're driving, you're not looking and you're listening to this. What are things that you can appreciate about your body right now? That is the very first step to feeling more confident. Okay, massive thing. I'm so glad. I wish we even covered it earlier in the interview because, listen, what happens if you, first off, nobody does, very few people stare and go, okay, I'm going to look at myself. So one, that's a gift you should give yourself. Be present with your body and look at it. Number one. Number two, that's a difficult thing to do. I totally acknowledge and recommend people do that. I agree with you. The second thing is you're instantly going to go to what sucks about it. Yeah. Look at that love handle I got. Look at this thing. I used to have that. So then there's going to be this like, you're just going to go find the things you don't like. But what if you could find like you said, one to five things, just one thing, man, I got sexy whatevers, you know, like <laughs> right. or that still looks damn good or man, yeah. my eyes are popping or whatever it might be. And then if it's even, and then if it's not from there, it's, but I'm good physically at doing this, man, I got one eh, good, you know what game, you know, or whatever it might be, <laughs> right. but find something to attach your confidence to sexually. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's your intent to pleasure somebody. Yeah. Just that alone. My, my intention is to be you know, is to give them pleasure. That's that's a huge thing. You're already ahead of 80% of the people are just selfishly trying to get exactly. what they can get sexually. Mm-hmm. But I think finding mm-hmm. your confidence game again, whether it's something on your body or your face or somewhere that you think, man, that is beautiful about me, and build from that or something you're willing, your, your intention um, intimately with somebody, mm-hmm. I think is a huge thing because what we're not confident in, we don't want to participate. It's like if, if you're totally terrified or think you're a terrible public speaker and I go, and to be in a happy relationship, you need to public speak five <laughs> nights a week. You'd be like, oh my gosh, five <laughs> nights a week, I'm terrible public speaker. So I think there's, there's a connection here and I'd love you to explore it even more in your work to finding your swagger yeah. sexually. You know what I mean? Finding your confidence. And I think sometimes that's, that time spending alone can do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so so good. That does give you confidence. If you're like, I just gave myself pleasure. I just learned my body yes. more. Then you're way more confident in your next relationship yeah. or in your relationship saying, look what I've learned. Look at this cool thing because it doesn't have to be so heavy. Like, how grateful is your partner going to be or would you be if someone said to you, like, 
someone said to you, look what I've learned. Look what feels great. When you touch my inner thigh this way, with this yep. finger, with this pressure, it feels great. Wouldn't you be so grateful? Like, so oh true. my God, I'm so glad I know this. Yep. And, and I'll just say one of the things that seems like a weird connection, but those of you that celebrate a particular faith, whatever that might be, I think that's an incredible place to build from in your mm. sexual life. I really do. And whatever that faith might be, but that might be the place to begin that, that there's such beauty in the connection that you have with this person, that there's, a, there's not just a physical connection, there's a spiritual and an energetic connection that you have with this person. Perhaps your confidence derived from that. And I don't think enough conversation is linking one's belief systems and faith that you share with somebody to having real intimacy with them. And I'll say this to a lot of you. If you pray together, okay, and this is something that's never talked about in the sex world, but if you pray together, that is a powerful connection to begin something physical afterwards with. And so mm-hmm. this may sound crazy. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. So there's all the nasty things you can do, and I'm a believer in all of them. But there's also a beautiful spiritual connection mm-hmm. that you can begin to build together as well or build from one you already have that turns into something even more powerful physically. So mm-hmm. that's one thing I always wanted to add. Okay, chapter nine. <laughs> explore and play. It's the one thing I just wanted to elaborate on before yeah. we're going to run out of time. This like flew by. We're already <laughs> like an hour in or 50 minutes in. But explore and play is chapter nine of the book. And there's all these great chapters in the book. And by the way, her podcast, Sex with Emily, like it's it's the jam. It's it's the podcast on this on this topic. But what do you, what does that mean? Like, does that mean like just have some fun with your partner playing around and trying yeah, different things? It means just like it's, because a lot of the other chapters are breaking down like oral sex, communication, um, a lot of different very specific positions. Mm-hmm. But explore and play is just anything that's a little bit kinky. And by the way, mm. kinky is basically defines anything that's not missionary position. Okay. So just okay. side note, we all do missionary, but kinky, it means that you want to try maybe some dominant submission play, some tying each other up. Up, kinky uh, is just an, dirty. an expansion from wherever you are. If you're expansion already pretty damn kinky, you may be going way this deeper This could be than next this. level. Because right. I want this book to be accessible to everybody yeah. wherever you're at. And I think the book does meet people where they're at. Yeah. And I think you're always refreshing and learning. I'm never done learning. Hopefully you're never done learning. I don't think you ever get to the point where you know everything about sex. So, you know, because we're always changing too. Mm. So this just gives people permission to have some fun with sex. It has mm. stuff on there like like the yes, no, maybe list. Like some, some tips about... Um, yeah, like some, because listen, one of the number one fantasies that people have, whether you're a man or a woman, is, is, um, well, I was going to say it's three, it's actually threesomes, mm-hmm. and it could even just be fantasizing about mm-hmm. a threesome. But the other one is like group, group play. But the other thing is like kinky, like either being spanked or doing the spanking, something dominant, submissive. And yeah. we kind of, that's the masculine, feminine yes. energy. Yes. And I don't just mean gender, but mm-hmm. somebody has to lead and someone has to follow mm-hmm. sexually. And sometimes, like, one of the biggest fantasies women have is being dominated, is like being taken, is mm-hmm. being forced to have sex. Mm-hmm. And so, in a, in a very playful way. So, this allows people and gives people permission to explore whatever your fantasies are. You know what I think? I think people want, I think they want to be wanted. Yeah, we want to feel desired. You feel desired. And I think if you have anything you want to kick off, it's like, I want you to want me, right? And I think that's reverse. And it's like, that may seem like a very basic thing, but when you were dating originally, man, they knew you wanted them. And somehow just, whether that is over the dinner or it is the vacation or it is the conversation or it is taking the quiz, the overriding thing I think is like, someone wants to be desired, Somebody wants to be wanted. And so I think if you're, if you're, I mean, I, here I am acting like I know the answer to this, but I'm just, I just know human behavior pretty well, right? And I know that it'd be pretty difficult to be intimate with somebody who you believe doesn't want you. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. Yeah. And so that's one of the, if you're going to start from some place today, you know, I would suggest starting there. And I would also tell you, you know, the reason I'm so glad we did this and I'm so glad you do what you do is I think there's two main like taboo topics in the world that if we talked about them more and shined light on them more often, that the world would just be a healthier, better place. And those two things are mental health, which is still this taboo thing. Like physical health isn't taboo. You get a knee injury, you go to a doctor and get it fixed. But mental health, which is what I try to do sometimes on the show. And the other one is sexual health. Yeah. And when you don't address sexual health in a healthy way, it can become very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And the things we've talked about, these addictions, these the desensitivity issues, the lack of intimacy, the eroding of marriages and relationships, a lot of this has to do with poor sexual health Mm -hmm. in people's lives. And so I think the work you do is like awesome. And listen, everybody, don't be so damn buttoned up. Give yourself the gift of listening to some of her stuff and exploring something. Oh, I'd never do that. Well, 
it's okay, it's okay to at least let your mind go somewhere for a minute. And maybe it opens up another part of your mind that's more your jam. Mm-hmm. And so exactly. I think you're awesome, Emily. Thank you. I really do. Thank I mean, like, you. I, I, you got me through this today. I feel I you feel like great. I don't it's have really a lot important. of injuries. I don't think anybody's going to be really mad at <laughs> no, me. No, I think it's really big. People really are probably inspired by you bringing this up. So I so appreciate being here, really. Yeah. It's important. Smart sex, how to boost your sex IQ, which you did today for a lot of us. And your own pleasure, which really, really matters. And probably the pleasure of your partner at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then you got the Sex with Emily podcast. So I think you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope everyone can, yeah, check out the book. I think um, I'm going to do this with you again because this wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to (laughs) be. There's so so much more places to go. Yeah, well, there's like a zillion more places to go. You're fantastic. Thank Thank you. you. All right, everybody, share this episode with anybody you know that needs some help in this area, which is everybody that you know. God bless you. Max out your life. (laughs) 